Welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I am just one of your hosts, Sean Boyle, and with me is Ashley Ma. And welcome to the half hour radio program that's broadcast every Sunday at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Flame, but thanks to a wonderful partnership with the St. Lucie County Public Schools and WLX TV, we are also a monthly television program. Mediocre at best. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're working on it. But what we do in this program is we talk about what resources and are ways for you to get involved regarding children and families in St. Lucie County. Now we, Ashley and I at the Children's Services Council, are not paid to be television and or radio show hosts because we're not good at it. But what we do at the Children's Services Council and what we are good at is five things for our community. And those five things are, you going to count with me? Yes. One, make sure every baby's a healthy baby. Two, stop child abuse before it happens. Three, keep kids off the streets. Four, keep them in school. And five, keep them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors by offering programs and resources available to all families in our community. You did a good job. Awesome. And I happen to notice, and only our television viewers are going to uh, pick this up, I brought a marker to write notes on. I already have marker all over my hand. <laughs> you can't be trusted. <laughs> this is why radio show people, if you're listening to it and you want to see us, you want to see what these radio faces look it. like, yes, it's <laughs> definitely worth the comedy. If you check out WLX TV at your local cable provider, or you can jump on YouTube, yeah. look up WLX TV St. Lucie Schools. You might be able to see the marker on Sean's hand. Exactly. <laughs> so Sean talked about those five priority areas, but there's a couple different ways that you can learn more about our programs. One is obviously tuning into the show, which is a great way. Um, but we also share a lot of information on our website about our funded programs. So our website is cscslc.org. You can get a list of all of our funded programs there, along with um, contact information for them, success stories for some of them, which is always great to read. Um, or we have printed copies of our family guide. And I brought a copy. You did. Thank you for your props today. I am. Um, but the family guides, I just wanted to point out, sorry. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests for these recently and the, throughout the community, whether it was from schools or doctor's offices or churches. Um, we are happy to bring these to your place of business and deliver them so that you have them on hand to share with your families, with your clients. Um, Sean and I had the opportunity to visit one of our schools recently and they asked us how many we could bring for them because they wanted it available in the office they wanted all of their teachers to have a copy um, so we're happy to distribute this throughout the community we've probably given out in the last five years close to 50,000 of these um, so we have these on hand please just call or send us a message and let us know that you want some and we will get them right to you and we used to have an app and we still we do. do for like another week yes but we are discontinuing correct. it Nobody needs to know why, but if you if you look on our website, if you use your phone, because nowadays, and you track a lot of this, most people are accessing, whether it be Facebook or the website, through their mobile device. Yes. But if you just type in the website address, cscslc.org, it's just as dynamic as the app. Um, that's part of the reason why we're not continuing the app. Yeah, and if you do have the app, you should have gotten a message in the last week or so that says that it will soon be shutting down. You can still access all the information on there until that happens, but again, everything that's available on the app is on the website, so you shouldn't have a problem finding it there. So a great way, as Ashley said, to kind of be the hero of your network, of your group, your squad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hip that way. Squad, whatever it may be, is to know about what resources are available, particularly when they're in need. You can obviously uh, look at the director, but another place that we have a strong presence where we get a lot of questions that are asked is on Facebook. Yes. Facebook is not only utilized to follow what people you went to high school are doing with it's also a great way to connect in your community about what events things that are happening but if you look up children's services council st lucie county we post on there nearly every day and what we're finding is a lot of people will message us with questions and we're more than happy to respond yeah and we can it's easy for us to share information that way too because if there's a specific program that someone's asking about we can send a link right through messenger um, so if there is a question that you have or that you come up with i feel like in the middle of the night is when it's we usually, get a lot you, of messages. To be honest with you, most of them come between 10 p.m. and yeah. about midnight. As we understand. Yeah. I, I so when the day settles yeah. down for parents and they're I, like, what am I going to do about this? I get it. Um, but we can answer questions there. We do share a lot of information on our Facebook page about um, issues that parents are having, are talking about. Um, about events for families. There is an event coming up that I want to mention. I know we've got other news to share, um, but we are working with the Early Learning Coalition and the City of Port St. Lucie to do the Kid Mania 
um, Land of Literacy event that's happening in October. And we recently shared about that on Facebook. So there's a lot happening with that event. Um, find it on Facebook and make sure that you're following along as they share more information. It's going to be a Big. lot of fun um, down at the Minsky Gym, Whispering Pines Park. Um, in Port St. Lucie, but we're really excited about that. Free books, free everything. It's going to be a good time. I did not know they tagged it Land of Literacy. Land of Instead Literacy. Instead of Land of the Lost, <laughs> Land of Literacy. I yes. like that. Yeah, there I you like go. that. And speaking of literacy, um, we, we bring this up a lot of times on our shows about our St. Lucie Reads Initiative. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say this past year, uh, our coordinator and working with the community and getting books into the hands of kids that don't distributed 12,000 books this year. Yeah, and it, it was like 10 months. It wasn't even a whole year. It was like yes. about 10 months, but um, he did a great job. So shout out to John. Um, we're really happy with the work that he's done and the partnerships that he's made and look forward to continuing staying the series. So a couple other family events before we get to our guests who are waiting patiently. Uh, Everybody's going to eat a big dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, on November 28th, which is Thursday, Thanksgiving. Yep. But if you want to make sure that you uh, burn off those calories before you <laughs> eat it, the Hands of St. Lucie County, the Hands Clinic, is uh, doing their second annual turkey trot, yep. which you're going to participate in. I have roped at least four of my family members into doing that. And so. that's a turkey trot, just so you know, it's not where you take your turkey that you're going to eat and you take them for a walk no. before you eat them. It is a 5K walk run family event. Yes, and it's, we've heard great things about it in the last couple of years. This is, I believe, the second annual um, that they're doing, but you can get more information about it. It is turkeytrotattradition.com. We've shared information about it on our Facebook page, but it's a great, fun thing for families to do um, that benefits a great organization in our community. And then one other family event, you know, we're, we're filling up your calendar. No more, <laughs> what is there to do for my family? No, we've got it. And this is this is kind of down the road, but you know, we're school planning. has started, there's seasons, right? There's right. hurricane season, there's school season, <laughs> and very soon there's going to be holiday season. Those are the three Florida seasons, by the way. Um, and so our annual, we don't, is this the ninth annual? Yes. Sure. Ninth annual yeah. Sounds of the Season free holiday concert is going to be at the Sunrise Theater on December 20th. This is a television exclusive. It is. It's this breaking news. Um, Friday, December 20th is going to be our Sounds of the Season holiday concert. If you're not familiar with that, it's where we have students that participate in our funded programs perform on the stage of the historic Sunrise Theater. And it's such a great time. Um, the kids are so talented, and we have uncovered some stars, I think, from some of our programs. Um, but we're really excited about that. Tickets usually go um, out to the public early November, so we'll make sure that we let you know. We just wanted to make sure that you got that date on your calendar. It is close to Christmas this year, I feel like, but that's actually the last day that kids are in school before the break. So. Um, it's Friday night, 7 p.m. It's a great way to sort of kick off that holiday week. So we hope you'll all join You got us. relatives coming in, in town, grab some extra tickets and enjoy a, big, a great family event. Yes, and, lots of fun. And it's free. Yes, we like free. All right, so we have some guests. We do. And, you know, I was thinking about not attending today's show, but then I realized <laughs> what the guest and what the topic was, so I decided to attend. Well, thank you for You like how I kind of did yeah. that? Yeah, thanks for showing up today. <laughs> So we have great guests, and I, I feel like this is, um, we have a standing appointment for you, if we will, <laughs> this month of every year. Um, so September is Attendance Awareness Month, and I'm sure any of our uh, viewers or listeners who have kids in school have seen banners and signs and flyers that have come home from their kids' school um, with information about Attendance Awareness Month. We belong in school, I think is the tagline I keep seeing everywhere. Um, so we have two ladies who work very hard on that issue all year long with us today. Linda Soto from Boys and Girls Club and Stacey Kaysen, who actually is a program specialist with St. Lucie Public Schools. I know you guys work, again, all year long on making sure that not just in September, but that our kids are in school every day. That is correct. So thank you for joining us today. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit, I don't know which one of you wants to talk a little bit about that sort of, um, we'll say, tagline, promotion, whatever it is that the school district is doing, we belong in school, because all of the schools are doing it. Um, the message, I feel like, is everywhere. I've seen it all over the place. So kind of talk about um, the, the push behind that and Attendance Awareness Month and what you guys are trying to accomplish. Okay, so I think we both can speak on that. <laughs> and um, so Attendance Awareness um, is a nationally um, recognized um, campaign uh, and it started 
five years ago, I believe. And um, we, as, an, as a school district and or, uh, Boys and Girls Club organization, and us having being part of um, the truancy program, um, we wanted to come and speak on your show so that we could make sure that we um, talk about attendance and, and how important it is for um, uh, children to attend school regularly and the impact that it has on their future. So one of the um, programs that we're really pushing this school year is really to uh, monitor our kids' attendance and ensure that we're helping our families to do everything they can to make sure that the, the kids are in school every day. And the motto of We Belong in School is exactly that. That's where we belong. That's where our kids are going to learn and grow and, and be exposed to the things that positive role models and, and the good academic instruction and everything. So through the partnerships that we have with agencies like Boys and Girls Club, we're able to um, get out there in the community and bring that message to parents that we really want their help in making um, sure that their kids can be in school every day and really pushing that as a priority so that we can we can have students with their with their their selves there where they need to be so they we can do the, our very best to instruct them so I know this sounds pretty obvious like <laughs> why is it so important that kids are in school but I do know that when we look at you know and we talk about this we have indicators that we track for child well-being if you will I believe there's 17 of them um, and most of them are going in the right direction and one of them that we and I know we as a community feel like it can get better, is this what's called chronic absences, yes. 21 or more days. So can we talk about you know, what is defined as a chronic absence? And I know this sounds really silly, but just in case somebody's watching, like, why does my kid need to go to school every day? <laughs> Seems pretty obvious, but let's just state the obvious. So chronic absenteeism is a measure that indicates if a child is missing more than roughly 10% or more of school in a given year, then they are at risk of failing and of not being able to learn what they need to learn to be able to progress in school. And that chronic absenteeism is not just unexcused absences because of uh, you know, a truancy issue, but it also includes any reason you might be absent from school. So for illness or for appointments or even for out of school suspensions because of discipline issues that occurred. So we really need to work to educate parents that there are ways to you know to help that factor if your child is sick absolutely they might need to stay home and you know we don't want to share all those germs with everyone and get everybody else absent from school <laughs> but we do want them you know parents to consider when they make appointments make them on an early release day when you have a couple of extra hours make them on a teacher work day when you have um, you know kids off of school and, and, are, and are doing nothing perhaps you know but playing video games mm -hmm. so we want to help people to understand that if they can do those simple things that it can help the overall um, you know achievement and help them by being there more often and it's hard I know for the younger kids you know when they're yes. when they're doing a lot of the developmental educational pieces and blocks if you miss three or four days you know that's three or four days that they're behind and <coughs> if they're not following and catching up or getting that support the next week or two is not going to mean much to them because they didn't get those previous three or four days so mm -hmm. it's very important well, and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean no, to interrupt, okay. but not just for that child, but when that child comes back to the classroom and is yes. now a full week behind and the teacher has to sort of rework her mm -hmm. instruction to ensure that she's catching that child up but keeping the other kids moving as well, that, that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for everybody then. Mm -hmm. And makeup work can be given, but you can't make up that loss mm -hmm. of the face-to-face -face time with the teacher and the learning that occurs in the classroom with their peers, the cooperative learning that they might do together when they're working in groups. Those are the things that you can't make up at home. And it's at the younger grades, it's, it's a basic founding, you know, um, foundational stuff that they're missing. But in middle school and high school, with block scheduling, they, you know, in, in seven class periods that they have to worry about, missing two or three or four days, just the catch-up work from so many subject areas can be really difficult for our older students. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the grade level. It really is a hindrance when there's successive days absent. And you bring up a good point because the school district is really good about publishing their calendar for the year. So, yes. so parents and everybody knows when they're off, what's the teacher work day, mm -hmm. all early release so that when you do schedule a doctor's appointments, because sometimes I've been there, when you schedule a doctor's appointment, you you know, this time, you know, three weeks from now, you're like, I'll take it because it's the earliest, but you got to think ahead mm -hmm. and think about the impact that it'll have on your child. Yeah, absolutely. Having that, those, those 
school holiday dates plugged into your calendar if you're using one on a smartphone or something is really nice when you are trying to make that appointment there in the doctor's office and oh oh that's an early release date let me have that date if that's available so they do fill up fast though I will say I yeah. had my kid at the dentist earlier this week and they fill up fast those spots so you've some, taught parents well then yeah, yeah. It's working. It's working. And, and so many may ask well why boys and girls clubs so mm -hmm. boys and girls clubs has been involved um, with the school district and and we've established a truancy project um, and we've changed the name truancy <laughs> prevention services um, and, and we had the privilege of being funded by Children's Service Council so thank you so much for the fund the continued funding and what we do is we support the schools we serve schools elementary schools and now we are actually in middle schools we're in 16 in total um, uh, el 15 elementary schools one middle school and we assist the schools by reaching out to the families of students that have five or more unexcused absences. So just kind of finding out what are some of the reasons why they're missing school. See if we can connect them with community resources if that's need and necessary. Um, find out what are some of the issues, you know. Um, they're not aware of a lot of the um, opportunities that they have or maybe the communication between the parent and the school is, is um, you know, um, not not quite comfortable for them. It's it's a different um, area for them to um, be aware of. So what they do is then they'll reach out. We assist them. We're like um, liaisons to reach out to them and be that connect between the school. And I know from conversations that we've had with you before, those those causes for the absences very widely and sometimes it's as simple as reminding the parent that they're responsible for making sure that their child gets to school but sometimes there are some underlying issues that the family is having that Boys and Girls Club then is able to make some community connections with for that family um, and get them the help that they need whether it's transportation or counseling some behavior whatever it is um, you guys kind of help make all of that work to make sure that that child can get back to school. Right. And it's, you know, so parents, if, if you get a, a letter from the Boys and Girls Club <laughs> or a knock and it's Linda, your child's probably missing school, right? <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, you know, because the school district will send that call, you know. Automated call. Automated call. call. Every yeah. time you a know, child is absent. Parents may or may not get those <laughs> messages. So <laughs> if, you get the, if you get the letter or the knock on the door, know that they're there to make sure that your kid's in school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the law holds the parents accountable for elementary school kids getting to school. So there has been cases, and it's rare, mm -hmm. if a parent isn't cooperative, there's actually a legal remedy yes. to entice their cooperation, <laughs> if you will. That is. But that's in extreme cases, because mostly you're problem solving with the school district to find out what the issues are and addressing it so that child can get to school. And you have a very high success rate. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, so, you know, we know that we have some listeners that maybe don't have kids or they're all grown up or, you know, it's late at night and they're watching TV and they're like, I'm watching this, but I don't have any kids. But it's really everybody can play the role to make sure that kids are in school by promoting the we belong in school message, but also if you're at church, or I guess kids don't go to school at church, uh, if, you, if you know you own a business and school-aged kids come into your place of business, you can ask them, like, why aren't you in school, right? Encourage that? Yeah, absolutely. The, the partnerships that we um, have made with some of the different community agencies to try to work with us to encourage our, our kids and really just getting the word out, we really need um, everyone to understand the importance of that. And whether that's at your church or your business or, you know, another something recreational thing that you're doing in the community, um, just everybody being aware of it and, and paying attention to it really will help to increase uh, kids' attendance if we can have everybody helping us to monitor this and helping us to really encourage kids and families that it's the right thing to do. And I know, for example, the city of Port St. Lucie, their police department has kind of helped step up to work yes. with you guys to make sure that the kids are in school. It's a yes. different message when law enforcement <laughs> shows up, right? It is. And, and that actually has been a great benefit to us. Um, because you do have those challenging situations um, and just their presence makes a huge difference. So I have a question probably more directed at you, Stacey, but if there is a parent who's maybe experiencing some challenges and knows that they're having a difficult time getting their child to school for whatever reason, mm -hmm. transportation, maybe the parent is ill, whatever it is, can they reach out to the district for help as well and say, this is the situation that I'm having, 
Who's the best person for them mm -hmm. to talk to? What do they need to do? Yeah, absolutely. All of our schools have a school social worker who serves that school site, and that would be the primary person that they could start the conversation with to see what we can work out to help some with some remedies for that. The um, school counselor on every campus would be a great person to start with, or even the front office clerk who maybe is handing out tardy slips if you're bringing your child in late. They can direct you to the right people. But between the school counselor and then the school social worker, absolutely, we have those conversations every day with how can we help you fix this? What are, we, what are the barriers? What community things, supports are in place can we put in place if necessary? Um, and sometimes it's as simple as, you know, they've, they've moved and they didn't update their address and so they're trying to drive their kid to an old bus stop and, you know, we need to update simple things that can be a quick fix. Um, other times it's much more complicated, but you, you, until we know what's happening, we can't help you. So talk to us and we can see what we can do to help. And I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm sure there's some parents like, I want my kid to go to school, but it's like a <laughs> daily fight, yeah. struggle, but it's good to know that there's school and community support to kind of help them and, and guide them through that. Yeah, yes. and a lot of our schools do um, like a mentoring program, if you will, with some of their students with attendance challenges so that they can, you know, be the cheerleader for that kid on campus. I'm so glad you're here today. Let's, you know, let's, let's make it a great day. And really encouraging and motivating some of those, those children who just, for whatever reason, are having a hard time getting there that is their issue maybe and, mm -hmm. and maybe a lack of wanting to be there. So Linda, because yes. you're kind of, well, not kind of, you are frontline, you're knocking on doors and <laughs> sending letters and showing up at people's houses saying, hey, let's get your kid into school. Mm -hmm. What are some of the uh, obstacles that you see that families are dealing with? Okay, so, well, currently I'm the vice president of specialized programs and I, we have grown significantly. So I do have five um, truancy specialists um, that are under me. So they are actually on the ground knocking doing on the, door. knocking, <laughs> do knocking on doors. Yeah. And, and so what they do is, you know, they, w our first approach is to let them know of the school policy and state law. Make sure that they're aware. Some parents, you know, you, we all get those brochures or those, you know, policies and do we actually really read them? So, um, one is m making sure that they're aware. And then second, just, you know, letting them know, hey, you know, it could be a transportation issue. Maybe the busing is too far from their home. So it's a matter of connecting them to the transportation department and seeing if there's a closer route. Um, it could be that, you know, um, they just have a child. We had a situation where one student um, was, a family member was ill. And so the other sibling was missing a lot of school as well, you know, but that wasn't necessarily communicated to the school. So as I mentioned before, we're kind of like that advocate for the parents. Um, sometimes they're intimidated. They don't know how, you know, it's going to look if they say certain things. Homelessness is, is a, a big issue that we face um, within the, com the county. Um, so a lot of times, the school's not even aware that these situations are going on. So what we do is we make phone calls, we'll make home visits, um, and really try to um, support the families in whatever way we can. I think it's important to note that you said that you show up to be an advocate mm -hmm. for the family. Mm -hmm. You're not going after them to try to bring them to court or to try to enforce the law. Right. You're trying to fix the problem. And, and that, I think, is important for us <coughs> to share because if somebody comes and knocks on my door, I'm immediately going to be like, oh, no, what happened? Yeah. But, you know, really the, the purpose of the program and the reason that your two organizations work so closely together is to fix the problem and make sure that the kids are getting the support that they need. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I know, Linda and Stacy, I know you when a child gets five or more unexcused absences, you get like a, a tickler or a, a, some type of notification. You're like, all right, that starts the process. Mm -hmm. But if somebody is watching and maybe you know they're struggling getting their kid to school or they know that it's an issue how do they get a hold of either one of you to make that contact to help work through the issue <laughs> okay well um, they can always contact the school directly um, but if it is one of the 14 schools or 16 schools that that we're currently in um, that we serve they can reach out to the boys and girls club um, the phone number is 772 Four six zero nine nine one eight. My extension is two zero five, so they can always reach out to me, um, or they can, as I said, reach out to the school directly, and um, 
they will contact. But we do um, identify every student in the schools that we serve that have five or more unexcused absences. So it's uh, automatic. Uh, it's automatic. Right. So we got a couple minutes left, and I want to end on a positive note, right? So we're talking about get your kids in school. Let's end on a positive note. Can we share a success story? and then maybe just a general message of what everybody can communicate to make sure that kids are in school. So let's start with the success story. Okay, so, <laughs> so the success story actually is just very recent. We do have a family um, that is currently in court and, um, and this parent was listening to another matter that was before the magistrate and she was making some, some comments like in disbelief as to what she was hearing. And as a result, she met with the uh, truancy specialist, Neil Bascom, um, and said to him, you know, I have to thank you for all that you've done for me throughout this time. I know I was that parent that challenged you that, you know, <laughs> and um, actually she is in the process, or that family is in the process of getting dismissed from court. Um, because of the significant change in their attendance. Um, right. So it's, it's nice to know that, you know, it may start out a little rough <laughs> for the parents and us, um, but in the end, you know, there are families that do understand the message that we're trying to get out there and how important schooling and academics is, you know, you know for their children. And as you mentioned and Ashley reinforced, when you come at the Boys and Girls Club to a, a family because of the truancy, you're there to work with them, not you know, the clash with them. But yes. if in case all your effort doesn't get anywhere, you heighten it and you have the opportunity to take them to Absolutely. court. Absolutely. I say that because I don't want everybody to think, <laughs> Linda's at my door, I'm going to court now. No. <laughs> that, no, no. Those are the exceptions. Yes. Yes. Those yes, are the exceptions. Yes, yes. All right, so we have about a minute left. So we belong in school. I, I believe that message is something that even it's pretty if, simple. That yeah, everybody can simple. adopt yep. and say it from the pulpit at church <laughs> to when you're picking up your grilled cheese. <laughs> By the way, everybody belongs in school. Is that fair to say? That's fair Every to business, say. everybody? Yep. It's very easy slogan. It's easy to remember, which is one of the reasons why we selected that. And just as a positive message for everybody to remember in the community that it's really important that our kids um, get to school every day so they can get the education that they deserve. Um, there's too many kids who just for some reason aren't going to school. And we really want to, to hone in on that. They deserve this. It's the opportunity that they need for the future. And it's really straightforward and it's self-evident, if you will. If they're in school, they're going to perform better. If they miss school, they're going to get behind. Their performance is going to suffer. And that obviously has a long-term effect, not only for yes. that immediate, but down the road as they pursue and their education. And for our community as a whole as well. Yeah, so. work readiness, yeah, the whole nine all yards. Of that. So. All right, so everybody adopt, we belong in school. Yeah, we better hear it. The, the gauntlet has now. been laid. Everybody <laughs> share it. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Thank yes, you for having thank us. Thank you both. All thank right, we are out of time. Reminder, it's a weekly radio program, so if you enjoyed this television broadcast, <laughs> check us out every Sunday at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Flame. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, it's our children, our community, our future. We all belong in school, <laughs> and we're all in this together. We'll see you next time.